Hello, pattern readers. I hope you're not done talking about the Wheel of Time teaser trailer because I'm not. I wrote and filmed my reaction and breakdown video the day it was released. So of course I made some mistakes and missed some things. So I wanted to go over those as well as cover the Q and A that Rave Judkins and Roseman Pike did after the teaser was released. But more importantly, I really want to dig into some of the big questions that the teaser trailer raised and didn't answer. I'm going to do some theorizing. In terms of book spoilers, I will be mentioning some events from the first three books, as well as some mild spoilers from New Spring, so be prepared for that. And I'm going to be doing some speculating about what we might see in season one, so there could be some spoilers there as well. So first of all, this shot of Rand and probably Matt on a rocky slope overlooking a walled city and a river. In my initial reaction, I thought it was Tarvalin because of the shape and the way it appeared to be in the river. But as many of you pointed out, with the height and size of the White Tower, as we can see in this shot, it would be visible even at this distance. So this must be another city and it must be only next to a river, not splitting it. Most of you think it is Shadr Logoth, and I agree. That seems to be the only other possibility for a city of size that would fit in with what we know of the season. So it would seem that Rand and Matt managed to leave Shadr Logoth on foot, as I have speculated before. And it fits in with my theory that we will not see Bail Doman in episode three. But if you caught my recent appearance on the Dusty Wheel, where I was breaking down what we might see in each episode with the innkeeper and John from What Up, then you'll know I did come up with another way we might see an appearance from our favorite Ilioner later in the season. More on that in a bit. Another mistake I might have made was in thinking that this shot of Rand and Matt running from something was in Emmons Field during the Trollic attack. Looking at it again, it seems like it could also be in a different location, and maybe this occurs after the split at Shadow Logoth. They could be running from Shadow Spawn or a Dark Friend or even a White Cloak in a different village. I honestly can't be sure on this one, and the only thing that bothers me is that I really can't make out whether Rand is carrying a sword. If they are in the two rivers, then it could make sense that he doesn't have the sword yet, but if they're not, then it really doesn't make sense to me. So I don't know, this one could still go either way. Another thing I missed mentioning was that there is a green sitter missing in this shot. We can also clearly see that there are the four red sisters we have seen involved in the mission to capture Loghain, as well as the other three green sisters we have seen on the same mission. The only one missing is Kareen Nagashi. Moraine is there also, of course. I believe these are the same eight women we see in this shot, mourning their fallen companions, along with their warders and Nynaeve. So I feel certain that this shot in the Hall of the Tower takes place after Loghain's followers have attacked the Aes Sedai camp, and Loghain has at least attempted to break free. As I did discuss previously, I believe Kareen dies in this attack, probably in the moment that Loghain bursts from the cage, and that this is when we see her warder step in, attempting to avenge her and later mourning her. I wonder if the missing green sitter is also explained by the death of Kareen Nagashi. In New Spring, she is not a sitter, but she is the captain general of the Green Aja, a role that would not be openly discussed. So I wonder if the show is making her a sitter, either instead of or in addition to the Captain General. By the way, this shot also shows exactly 30 women. Even though we can't see Swan in her position on the Amarillan seat, we know she is there. Rafe Judkins likely made reference to this exact scene in March 2020 when they were filming a scene in one of the episodes directed by Sally Richardson Whitfield, which are episodes five and six. In this scene, we have what appears to be Moraine walking out of the Hall of the Tower rather than into it as I initially thought. This is based on the position of the three brown sitters in the background. The women who are already in the antechamber appear to be the same women on that mission to capture Loghain, which suggests that perhaps Moraine is kept longer in the hall than the rest of them are. What is interesting is that the sitters are still there, and I can't imagine that Swan wouldn't want to talk to Moraine alone, so it would be interesting to see how she manages that. By the way, Glenn the Geeky Hippie has pointed out that these three brown sitters have their backs towards Moraine. Is that deliberate? Is it some sort of censure or shunning, a recognition of punishment, or some other ritual that we don't know the purpose of? If you want to hear more of me discussing all the changes in this teaser trailer with him and Max from Dragon Mount, go and check out this new video from our new channel, Watt the Adaptation.
Then we have this scene where Swan, wearing a more subdued dress and jewelry, is talking to someone, saying the last battle is coming. Because she seems to have let her guard down. I theorize that this could be talking to Moraine. However, other people have theorized that the person might be Nynaeve, and that seemed to be based on the glimpse of an earring we can get. I looked carefully at Nynaeve's earrings, and they are small, simple gold hoops. It is really hard to be sure in this shot because of the blur, but the woman here looks like her earring might be thicker. I definitely am not convinced that this woman is Nynaeve. Although to be fair, this earring does not look like the ones we've seen Moraine wear on her travels either. Moraine might have multiple pairs of earrings that she can trade off, though I doubt Nynaeve does at this point. Another possible candidate for this woman is Liana, and if I had to bet, I might actually go in that direction. The earring is certainly less elaborate than the ones we see her wearing here, but since Swan is dressed more plainly on this occasion, it would probably make sense for Liana to be as well. That said, the second part of what Swan says, the only thing that matters is what you do, could well be from another scene, and if I had to guess, I think that part is said to Moraine in reference to their secret mission to find and protect the Dragon Reborn. To me, one of the big things that this trailer seems to confirm is that Moiraine at least is in Tarvalin, likely in episode six called The Flame of Tarvalin and directed by Sally Richardson Whitfield. And we also know from metadata on this image of the cast for EW that the group goes to the Waygate also in episode six. As I talked about in my trailer breakdown, I do now believe that Camelin has been cut from the season. So the remaining question then is if the group does not reunite in Camelin. Where do they reunite? Do they reunite in Tarvalin? Because there are implications for some of these characters being in the city and then being able to go on to Faldara from there, which we know they do. But if the whole group is in Tarvalin, why don't they go to the Ogier Grove where we know there should be a Waygate? Because this really does not look like an Ogier Grove. So I'm going to try to piece together a couple of possible scenarios to explain this information and try to make it make sense. First, I'm going to try to make it work for everyone to meet up in Tarvalin. So in theory, because we know that Moraine and Lan and Nynaeve seem to be with this group of Aes Sedai and Loghain, both during and after the attack, they could just go on to Tarvalin with them afterwards. The first problem I see with that is, what about Perrin and Egwene? Let's assume we still have the scenario where they are captured by White Cloaks and need some rescuing. Now, it's possible that we can see that encounter of Perrin and Egwene with White Cloaks where Hopper is killed and then Perrin kills some White Cloaks, but maybe we don't have the subsequent capture. Or maybe they are captured, but they manage to escape on their own. Or maybe it's just wolves that help them. Or a slimmer possibility, maybe Aram helps them escape. I think that's kind of a stretch. But if they want to keep it as it is in the books, where Moraine and Lan and Nynaeve help Perrin and Egwene escape, I think they would have to do that before going to Tarvalin. But this could be a possibility. Context clues suggest to me that the battle where Loghain's followers are attempting to break him free likely happens in episode four, The Dragon Reborn. And then that would mean these burial and mourning scenes are probably episode five. What could happen at that point is Moraine splits from the other Aes Sedai, agrees to meet them in Tarvalin. And that would allow time for her and Lan and Nynaeve to perhaps find Perrin and Egwene in episode five. And then all the Tarvalin stuff could happen in episode six. What about Rand and Matt? We know that Loyal first appears in episode five. And if we're sticking to the outline of the books, then Rand and Matt should meet up with him on their travels before they reunite with the others. Now, if everyone is meeting back up in Tarvalin, it makes the most sense to have Loyal be in Tarvalin, probably still at Basil Gill's Inn. You know, he's there to visit the Ogier Grove. Now, can we get Rand and Matt to Tarvalin ahead of the others so they can meet Loyal there in episode five? I think we can, though it's hard for me to make it make sense without boat travel at some point. So I can see them making their way on foot from Shadar Logoth to a village and meeting Tom in episode three, which is suggested by this unblurring of the script thanks to the dusty wheel. I'm pretty sure Tom would then travel with them for a little bit because we think his last episode is episode four. So then in episode four, imagine that they are at another village, they're attacked by Shadow Spawn or a dark friend, and that's where Tom stays behind and 
Rand and Matt go on ahead. Let's say Rand and Matt meet up with Tom somewhere around Whitebridge. Doesn't have to be that exact city. And then he travels with them to say Four Kings in episode four, where they are attacked again and leave Tom behind. I'm picturing maybe they meet up with the Grinwells after that, and maybe they are the ones who'd give them a ride in a cart. Only, instead of taking them to Camelin, they might take them a bit further, to the River Aranen, somewhere around Arangil. From there, Rand and Matt could catch a boat upriver to Tarvalin. I can't really make sense of them getting all the way on foot to Tarvalin somehow. And this could be the possible way to include Bail Doman after all. Steve, anyone? So I can imagine that Rand and Matt get to the city of Tarvalin in episode five and meet Loyal probably at Basel Gill's Inn. And then Moraine and the rest would make it to the city in episode six, either separately or together. Now, the one thing I feel really strongly about in this scenario is that Moraine is the only one who should go into the White Tower itself. If Nynaeve and Egwene, for instance, stepped foot in the White Tower, it seems like they should not be allowed to leave without writing their names in the novice book. And then if they had, there's no way they should be allowed to go take a jaunt off to Faldara, which we know they do from leaked photos, make it to Faldara, probably in episodes seven and eight. So it seems like Moraine should leave everyone behind at the inn. That's assuming there's already this plan to go to Faldara and Moraine knows that she doesn't want to be detained or have to leave anyone behind in Tarvalin. One problem I have with this scenario is if Moraine has seen Matt in Tarvalin, why does she not immediately take him to the tower to be severed from the dagger? Maybe she does, but it seems like it would be really hard to then keep the others away at that point. Would she think that the urgency of getting to the eye outweighs the need for Matt to be severed completely? Maybe she does think what she could do alone would be enough for the time being. Or would she risk bringing one or two other sisters to the inn in secret? To me, it would be a little strange to see Matt healed from the dagger completely so soon. Another possibility is maybe it could happen in Faldara by the end of the season if the dagger isn't stolen. The one thing I think I would really miss if we don't get to see Matt healed in the tower in season two is there would be no possibility of him handing Galad and Gawain their asses right afterward. As for why they would go to a waygate not in Tarvalin, I can see an argument for they need to get out of the city without being seen by Aes Sedai. And Loyal, of course, would be able to sense and lead them to another waygate. And they could certainly invent an abandoned steading wherever they needed to for this purpose. This might also explain why we see them in two groups in this shot approaching the waygate. Maybe they temporarily split up to get out of the city. Loyal leads Moraine, while Lan with some of the others is able to find them through his bond with Moraine. All in all, I can see this working. And the only issue I really have is making whatever happens with Matt and the dagger make sense. One possibility I like for this scenario is the chance that another Aes Sedai actually could spot Maureen leading the others out of the city unbeknownst to them. It would be a perfect opportunity for Leandrin, who would be suspicious of Maureen and might decide to follow her. She could even report it to the Amarlin as a way of gaining favor or some other scheme. This could explain why Kate Fleetwood was filming during Block 4, Episode 7 and or 8. We don't know if Sophie Okoneto was also filming in that block, but we think Kira Chansa, the actress who plays Young Swan, did film for that block, and it would be unlikely for her to appear in those episodes if Sophie Okoneto does not. So perhaps Maureen keeps some information from Swan in her quest to get to the eye as quickly as possible, and if Leandrin finds out some of it and reports to Swan, it could give a reason for one or both of them to follow Maureen to Faldara. Now, let's see if I can come up with a plausible scenario where all of the group does not get to Tarvalin. So if Moraine decides to go to Tarvalin with the other Aes Sedai, but to keep Nynaeve away and to continue their actual mission of finding the others, she sends Lan off with Nynaeve to go find Rand and Matt, who she can sense are nearby. Maureen goes to Tarvalin, does her business, and then heads back south, at which point she comes close to Perrin and Egwene, 
rescues them. Now, Lan can find Maureen wherever she is, so the two smaller groups reuniting at that point does make sense. This scene could then be their coming back together, but why would they go to a way gate if they were not all together to share information and realize that they needed to go to the eye? One group needs to have Loyal with them in order to make the ways a plausible option. Based on this shot, maybe Loyal is already with Moraine near the gate. But that would mean he had been with Moraine and or Perrin and Egwene rather than Rand and Matt, which seems less likely to make sense. Overall, while this option eliminates the tricky question of what to do about Matt and the dagger, it raises some other questions that I don't really have good answers for. Like, why does Moraine go to a waygate if she's only spoken to Perrin and Egwene at that point? And how does Loyal come into the story, especially when we know he is introduced in episode five? So I lean towards the first option. What do you think? On a somewhat related note, I know some people believe part of the ritual we saw with Egwene in the teaser, where she comes out of the water and has stripes of color on her face and dress, is part of a white tower ritual such as the accepted test. Honestly, I doubt this very much. I see little plausibility for Egwene being allowed to leave the tower and go to Faldara if she only visits it, and much less if she is actually taken into the tower and immediately raised accepted. I believe that this is instead a women's circle ritual and that it actually occurs before Nynaeve pushes her off the cliff because we can see remnants of the paint on her dress here and her hair is now braided when it had been loose in the pool. Now let's run through some interesting answers that Rafe and Rosamond gave to the questions they were asked after the teaser trailer was released. I'll run through some simple ones first. Rafe declined to answer whether Egwene's ritual has to do with the one power or wisdom testing. He did confirm that people would be able to watch the show with their teenagers, which fits with the also confirmed rating of TV 14. And he revealed that the composer will be Lauren Balf. We had heard a bit of his work in the logo reveal, but if you want more, I'll share some links for you. They answered a number of questions about the visual effects. Rafe shared that all of the VFX teams looking at the One Power were going off of documents of descriptions of it pulled straight from the books. Rosamond added, I needed to feel that you would believe Moraine had this power if there were no effects. The most important thing for me was that I felt connected to something greater than myself. Robert Jordan is so eloquent about what it feels like to channel. The feeling of the one power of filling your veins, the risk of it, the risk of drawing too much and the necessity of respecting it and being trained to use it. Rafe also says he loved seeing how his initial vision for something was lifted and changed and made better by the people around him. So his favorite visuals were the ones that were better than he had imagined. I love this answer from Rosamond because I think it shows a good strategy for bringing out the actor's best performances. It's so important to have a living, vivid world inside your imagination where you are shooting sequences that will be completed with CGI. And the production has always made sure that we had plenty of visual references for how things would look as we went along. We have never worked on a set in which at least part of the world is not built. We have always had elements of the texture and atmosphere of the finished world to work with. She also said that when she first saw herself channeling, she felt like a badass and said to Rafe, I need this video of me shooting fireballs to show to my sons again and again. On the fade, we learned that it was primarily practical effects enhanced with VFX, which Rafe feels makes for a better visceral reaction. And while Rosamond was terrified by the lips and teeth and even the skeleton mask on the horse, Rafe just saw him as Dan goofing around on a horse. Rosamond also seemed quite impressed with and terrified by Shutter Logith. She mentions it as part of the teaser that she was most excited for fans to see more of, and that you really feel how the dark is a material substance that chases and consumes. The visual effects and the extremity of this sequence haunts me. So I think that confirms that this dark advancing shadow is how the show is showing us Mashadar, and it's probably more frightening than a fog effect would be. She also includes it as one of her favorite locations to film at and praises the production designer, along with the way that Tarvalon was built from the ground up with intricate detail. Rosamond also answered questions about what drew her to the role and her favorite aspects of the series. She mentions the way Aes Sedai harnessed the elements of the universe to unleash incredible power, the amazing cast, the warm and welcoming fan base, and her warder, aw. She also discusses the challenge with fantasy of making the stakes your own, making the concepts and ideas that are so outside our own experience feel real and immediate. Just for fun, I'll add that Rafe thinks Moraine likes buffalo wings, while Rosamond says she would just eat to live and only drink tea. 
Now for a real eyes that I answer. Asked about her favorite Maureen speech, Roseman says, Maureen can be very silent, so when she speaks, we listen. In the books, it's the weep for Manetherin speech. Notice she specifically said, in the books. So we still don't know if that scene actually appears in the show. And I kind of lean towards no after that answer. But I am glad to know that Rosamond is reading the books. But if you know me, you'll know my favorite answer was this one. Rafe says, season one will cover book one, plus some of book two, and even book three. But also not all of book one, as some of it is in season two cryptic enough? This answer needs to be picked apart. And rest assured, I will. And I will be coming back to it as I'm speculating about how the first couple of seasons are going to be put together. But for now, let me know what you think it means in the comments. Like and share this video. And until next time, gird your loins, my friends.